Hey there, YouTube bassists. This is John from JohnFoxBass.com, premium bass guitars. Coming to you today with the brand new Bergantino B Amp Mark II. And I wanted to do a little demo of this amp and some of the great features that it has, and also do a comparison between this amp and a couple of my other favorite amps, uh, the 1966 Ampeg B15N and a Sadowski SA200, all tubes uh, from the early 2000s. So right now I'm, uh, I've got this Oliva Capolo uh, LG5 Classic Supreme Limited jazz bass plugged into the uh, Sadowski at this moment and we're going to listen to how it sounds and then switch over to the BM. running through the NXT cabinets, the 322 stack it's called, 210, 112, and the Sadowski is running through the 322 stack, the reference series, 210 and 112. That's the Bergantino. I have to look, I can't tell. And that's the Sadowski. Again, the Sadowski. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is I want to I want to play a loop uh, that I recorded and listen to the just the loop uh, switching back and forth between the two amps so we can really get a direct um, A B comparison between the two. So here's the loop going through. I'll point to which amp is playing. That's that one. sound exactly the same and I before this video I preset the tone controls on the B amp um, to exactly match the Sadowski and I think uh, it matches quite well um, I also I'm gonna play that same loop we're gonna switch to a different memory setting in the B amp now I've got the I'm on memory 2 and we can we can store memory 1 and memory 2 presets in here and also then you can turn the memory off and then just dial in a sound and so you've got essentially three sounds that you can switch between at the push of a button. So we're at um, preset number two and the same, uh, same lick with the, this is the Bergantino. show you is, an, is a really amazing uh, feature that the that the B amp has um, for playing uh, an upright bass. So every 
once in a while, if you're an upright player, um, you'll get in a room and you'll get a, a wolf tone. You'll get some note that, uh, that is feeding back. So the B amp has got, you push the filters button, and we have a, a variable feedback filter. And let's say that your note that was feeding back was, was uh, A2, this, this A. Um, oh, that's A, that's A1, sorry. You hear that? So uh, you just set this dial at whatever note is, is feeding back, C, G, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all the sharps. So in this case, A1. And then how much attenuation do you want? And it's a notch filter, and it notches out that note. You can hear it takes the takes the low end right out. You can still hear the harmonic, the, you know, the, an octave higher, but the note itself um, is wiped out when I, I put it all the way to minus 12. So that's really, really awesome. And that um, setting is not memorized with your memory settings because that's going to be different, you know, from room to room. So let's go take a look at um, at some of the the front panel controls on this B amp up close here. Let's see if I can get the camera to uh, to show it. There we go. That works. So this is the the uh, the bandpass variable frequency bandpass filter, and I was on A1, and we can dial it anywhere from off to minus 12. So um, this is the the home screen. We've got my tone controls, bass, low mid, high mid, and treble. And the memories, I have memory one, those are my memory one settings, and I had the bright on as you can see. And memory two, those are my settings. And that's just the you know boost and cut settings. But in addition to boost and cut, if we hold down any one of the tone controls, we can vary the center frequency, 85 hertz, 225 hertz, 700 hertz, 2500 hertz, for each tone control, we can vary the center frequency, which is amazing. So you've got a nice range there. And then though I can change these settings if I want. I had it at 700 here, right? And if I go to memory one and go back to memory two again, I'm still I'm back to uh, I'm back to 700. It, I didn't you know I didn't lose my setting. It saves it. Uh, it saves it in, in non-volatile memory, in fact. Um, and then. In addition to uh, the center frequency, if we hold down the program key, we get into more menus, um, and we can actually change. Sorry, I got to hold it short. We can actually here we turn on and off the compressor and make it series or parallel, and how much compression and how much gain, and uh, and we hit it again, and we've got an effect. We've got distortion, overdrive and fuzz and how much drive uh, is applied to the effect channel and how much output volume and and then blending it in with the clean you can vary from zero to hundred percent affected and then uh, if we hold the program button in then we go through more menu options this is for uh, an active instrument, and then we can go to uh, low, in, low, you know, for a passive instrument. And we've got the DI in the back, which is a fantastic DI. Can be either pre or post EQ. And the bright button here, uh, we can change the frequency of that from two to ten kilohertz, and how much boost we're getting. And the speaker profiles, we have the NXT or yeah 322 stack here but we have various other speaker profile options depending on what particular speaker I'm using and then here we can load in through the front panel through the USB um, additional profiles that we can download from Bergantino's website and here this is the coup de grace on the tone controls we can change the Q, which is the steepness of of the um, the bandwidth of the of each filter. So is it uh, narrow or medium or wide? So wide is you know a lot more gentle, and narrow is very tight and notchy. 
And so you can see on memory two, in order for me to replicate the uh, Ampeg, I had to go, um, oops, I timed out. I had to go to medium, narrow, narrow on, on these uh, tone controls on the bass, low, mid, and high, mid. And on each one, you can go wide, medium, or narrow. And again, those are all saved you know, in this setting. This one I had on, on medium. Uh, and then my speaker impedance, if I change to 2 ohms or 2.67, the fan's going to kick on full time. Here the fan only goes on when I need it. And if I'm having some weird phase cancellation issues uh, with other speakers that are on stage with me, um, from stage monitors or even the house, if there's some weird phase cancellation happening, we can actually reverse the phase of the cabinets. It's like flipping the speaker wires red and black. Um, and that may um, get rid of the cancellation issue. Uh, and here we have a tuner. We, there's a built-in tuner, and we can vary that from 432 hertz to 448 hertz for the center for the A frequency of the tuner. And we can also disable the tuner if we want. Normally it's enabled, uh, and you can have the tuner for either guitar or bass. And this sets the fan to either uh, quiet, normal, or always on. And if I had the Bluetooth uh, remote pedal, then I could have some settings here to do with that. And here I reset back to factory settings. So that's all the settings in this thing. Um, it's really intuitive. I mean, it's nice to read the manual, but you can actually use this thing without reading the manual. It's amazing. It's <laughs> so much power and complexity, and yet it's totally intuitive. You can also plug in an MP3 player in the front here. Uh, and vary the volume of that you know, from your cell phone or whatever. And this is just your preamp gain uh, that you adjust for the uh, loudness of your instrument. So if you if you overdrive it, you know it's going to show you an overload, and you're clipping, and then that's you know you're going to destroy your speaker. So you cut it back to to where you're not overloading, and then then you have the most uh, dynamic headroom uh, from the uh, from the amp. So. There you have it. That's a quick walking tour of the B-Amp. You can uh, learn more about it at johnfoxbass.com. And, of course, buy it at johnfoxbass.com. Uh, check out the website. Lots and lots of uh, basses and also guitars and uh, Ber all the Bergantino gear is available there. Thank you for watching, and uh, don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already and find out about new basses and gear as it gets upload it to the website. Thanks very much. By the way, uh, if you were interested in that loop, it was recorded with with the P-Bass, with flats. This beautiful Oliva Capolo P-Bass, KBP4 Classic Supreme Limited. Beautiful bass. So that's what it sounds like with flats. Thank you.